Here we are in beautiful Scottsdale, Arizona. We've got sunshine, perfect weather, cactuses, palm trees, and of course, we're gonna go play some hockey because this is the first annual BHL Cup. I'm at the Ice Den in Scottsdale, the practice facility of the Coyotes. It's a gorgeous facility, nothing but top notch for my BHL players, so let's go check it out. So there's three sheets here at the ice den. And like I said, it's a practice facility for the NHL Coyotes. So it's a very nice facility. It's also home of the 18 degree bar, which is ranked one of the top 20 hockey bars in the entire world. I don't know who did that ranking, but it sounds legit to me. First step is registration. So you gotta fill out some paperwork, sign some audis, that sort of thing. Let's go. What's up, Eric? How you doing, man? Is this where we register? All right. After getting registered, studying all three rinks, and taking some pictures with fans, I headed back to the condo to meet up with my roommates for the weekend. Welcome to Scottsdale, where the weather is absolutely perfect. That's why we have the BHL Cup here. And there's the waste management tour, the bird's nest, the hawks come in town. There's a lot of cool stuff going on. So let me show you the condo where Barbara and I were staying with a few of our buddies. This is where we air out our gear, as well as the lawn that I mentioned before. So this is the laundry room. Um, I wash my base layers and my socks after every game because I like to smell good and be fresh, just like the pros. So um, I've been using that quite a bit. These are the fellas. Oh, you got some. Dave Bowden, Greg Bowden, and you guys all know this clown. I introduced this guy to Fruity Pebbles because they don't have them in Canada. Did that change your life? Yeah, they're the greatest. Go out and buy some. So this is the kitchen where you'll find a lot of beer, Gatorade, as well as snacks and other things to eat. So our back patio. Like I said before, the weather is absolutely perfect. So we like to chill out here and have some pops after uh, victories. Yeah, let's go upstairs now. This is the mirror where I catch Barber checking himself out all the time. How could I not? Yeah. All right, so we got Pavel's room here. It's pretty sick. He's got his own. He's got his own balcony, which is pretty boss. There we go. Barber's has his own balcony. Yeah. He earned it. Do a lot of thinking out there. But I got the master bedroom, of course. This is where the master sleeps. Check out this bathroom here. It's pretty dope, right? So much room for activities in here. Oh crap, that is big. <laughs> That's what she said. So yeah, it's master bedroom's mine. I got a king size bed, fit for a king. It's pretty sick. It's uh, that's about it. You telling everyone this is your room again, Kinger? Get out of my room. Alright, hey, you can edit that part out. That way people will think that that's my room. Oh, I saved it. It didn't go in. Are you filming? It's about 6.15 a.m. and we're grabbing some coffees before the big tilt. I haven't been up this early since Mini Mites. I thought you didn't play in Mini Mites. I haven't been up this early since squirts or peewees whatever it doesn't matter it's early it's so early i did not sleep well you guys in the master bedroom and i was really thrown off by this early morning game we got to the ring 30 minutes before game time which is super late for me i didn't have time to do a deep stretch wind sprints meditate watch videos of myself making six saves or do any hand eye exercises but there's no time for excuses. So I had to put on the armor and get ready for battle. The first period started off pretty sloppy, or sleepy, I guess you could say. Heads up, heads up. There are a lot of turnovers. One even led to a goal for the Pond Rockets, who were made up of dudes mostly from Michigan. 
They seem like a pretty solid group, and their goalie played well. I can admit this only because Eric told me he was also a Bauer athlete and has a friend that's friends with Hank too. Small world. Our team, Schlitzfaced, was made up of free agents from all over the map. We had a handful of Canadian players and some guys from all over the US, including Arizona. We had a few guys sleep through their alarms, but that didn't really affect us too much. We had our chances, we just couldn't really capitalize. Let's give it to Barbs, let's give it to Barbs. Nice shots, boys, good start, good start. Nice period, boys. Keep it going, we're good, we're all good. Got a couple more bodies now, that'll help us. Barbs, good period, buddy. He had a couple sick dangles. Well, you know, chip bucks deep. We weren't doing our jobs. We only had eight guys, so now we got a full squad, and we're gonna go hard. Let's go. I had some bad luck in the second period, as they were able to score two more goals. I'm not gonna lie. It was tough to get into rhythm. Not having the Rebels with me and all the traveling through the last week and a half, I guess you could say, threw me off a bit. And some of my teammates were a bit overhydrated from last night, if you know what I mean. No joke, throughout the game, I witnessed one of my D-men evolve from the skill level of a PVC player to the dude we all know that played D1. It was, uh, it was pretty impressive. Nice play, ball out of boy. Pavel Barber was able to chip in the first goal at the end of the second period. Although my cameraman didn't capture the goal because he was occupied with the super important task of getting a donut. I wish I was making that up. But anyways, on to the third period. Hey, another good period, White. I gotta be better. We've got plenty of hockey left. We can pop a few in here for sure. I felt pretty good going into the third period until the Pond Rockets scored a quick goal and I considered breaking my stick into 87 pieces. But I remained calm, and I really like my 1S sticks. But that seemed like it was a turning point for us as we finally started to gel, or sweat enough and drink enough water to reach a certain level of sobriety. And it showed, because we were getting some scoring chances left and right, and Barber was just starting to heat up. Four two, so uh, we got to get two goals or three. Here's another sick goal from Barber. Sick, Matty, Patty, Pavel, Barber. Here's another goal, tying the game at four. Oh wait, the camera guy missed that goal too. Barbs has four straight goals. It was a sick goal. He walked three players, toe-dragged the D-man, and turned the goalie inside out. Boom. Tie game. The last few minutes of the game were pretty tight, but thanks to Barber... Get five, Barbs. Just get five. Why not? ...and a few six saves from me, we headed into overtime. Blow it! We didn't really give him much in overtime, and we certainly could have ended it a few times. After all that, we're headed into a shootout. I never lose shootouts. And listen, the Barber videos don't count. I'm talking about actual hockey games. In actual hockey games, I do not lose shootouts. Our first player made a filthy move to give us an early lead. Then I shut the door on their next shooter. Our top D-man from Denver, who I may have been talking about previously, had an absolute jam of a goal with a sick toe drag. I'm 99% sure he saw that one of Hey Barber's Instagram videos, but still, clutch goal nonetheless. That meant all I had to do to complete this comeback from a 4-1 to deficit was stop this dude. Come back, baby. Come on. Come on, boys. Hey, have to 
There you go. 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 you go. There you Good game, guys. Good game, guys. Obviously not the start we wanted or what I wanted. I uh, felt like I should have had a couple more saves for the boys, but I'm um, happy we battled back and I was able to shut the door. And how about Barber getting four straight goals? Four straight sick goals. Um, I've never lost a shootout in my life, so as soon as we got to that point, I knew we were going to get the W. So glad we started off the tournament with a win, and hopefully we can keep the momentum going here.